Hello, welcome to the CWP tutorial. In this video, we'll be discussing the User Panel Reseller module on Control Web Panel. To access your User Panel, navigate to your IP port 2083. Enter your login information and log in. This opens our Control Web Panel User Panel. And this is our reseller account username. To configure our reseller account, go to the left-hand sidebar and select the reseller submenu, and then select Manage. This opens the reseller module. Throughout the reseller module, we'll see the navigation tabs, reseller dashboard, accounts, packages, features, name servers, and branding throughout the entire module. From the dashboard, we'll be able to see our various package limits according to what's available and what's been used. This includes your disk quota, bandwidth, FTP accounts, email accounts, email lists, add-on domains, subdomains, parked domains, databases, and accounts. If we'd like to change any of these, we should contact our administrator to change the package that we're subscribed to. This reseller account is currently subscribed to the premium package. Before we can create any new accounts, first we'll have to create some packages to sell them. So start by going to the Packages tab. There are no packages created yet, so we'll have to create one to get started. Click the button here, Add New Package. First, give your package a commercialized name. Then, assign your various limits, including disk quota, which is maximum 50,000 megabytes, bandwidth, which is maximum 250,000 megabytes, FTP accounts, which is maximum 20, email accounts, which is maximum 20, email lists, which is maximum 20, databases, which is maximum 20, subdomains, maximum 20, parked domains, maximum 20, add-on domains, maximum 20, and hourly emails, maximum 200. Once you're happy with your limits, click Save. And we'll see the confirmation dialog, and our new package has been added to our packages list. We can repeat the process as many times as we want by clicking the Add New Package button. We'll create a new package here called RapidServe2 with more moderate limits and click Save. And let's do one more. We'll create a premium package called RapidServe3 with maximum limits and we'll click Save. Here in the table, we can compare our various packages to make sure they're configured properly. And if we need to make any changes, we can click the Edit button here in the Actions column. And then save those changes. If we decide to get rid of any of these packages, we can click the Delete button under the Actions column and we'll be given the chance to confirm the deletion. Yes to continue or cancel. Now that we've set up some packages, we can proceed to create an account. To do that, we'll go to the Accounts tab and then click Add New Account. We'll start by adding a domain name. This has to be unique to the user and should be entered without the www or any symbols such as slashes. A username will be automatically generated based on the domain name, but you can customize this if you wish. It can be a maximum of eight characters, but must not include any capitals or symbols. Then you can enter a password. You can either enter a custom password or use CWP to generate one. If you click the encryption drop-down list, you can specify the length of your password, we recommend 12 characters or more, and the character type, either alphabetic, alphanumeric, or alphanumeric in symbols, which would be the most secure and then click the key icon to generate a random password. 
This will be automatically copied to your clipboard. Then you can enter the admin email. Then from the package drop-down list, select a package that we created in the previous step. Then select your language for communication. And lastly, you have additional options to back up the user account, which is checked by default, and you can also opt to select Auto SSL. When you're done, click Save. And a new user account is successfully created. You can see the new user represented here in the table by username, email, package, disk usage, or bandwidth. Under the Actions column, we can choose to either change the password, in which case we have the ability to select the length and character type, generate a new password. If we don't like the strength of this password, we can click the key again to generate a stronger one. We may need to adjust our character set to do so. When we're happy with the strength of our password, it's automatically copied to our clipboard and we can either save or close. We can also choose to disable backup. If backup has already been disabled, we can choose to activate the backup. We also have the option to suspend the account. And if the account is already suspended, we have the option to activate the account. And lastly, we have the action to delete the account. This is different from suspension. This will actually delete the account from our table. If we have many accounts, we can expand our table by using the selector here or search for a specific account that we're looking for. CWP also gives you the ability to curate the features that you include with your package. To modify the feature set for your packages, click the Features tab. By default, all features will be available in packages without specific settings. So to create a custom feature set, click Add New Setting. First, we'll select a package, and then the menu shows you all feature settings available for this package. Currently, all features are included. If we choose to curate specific features, like for example, we might choose to include backups, cron tab, email accounts, file manager, and FTP accounts. Once we're happy with our feature set, click Save. And the feature set is saved and added to our featured settings list. Within the list, we can see the package and modules that we have assigned for each, as well as actions to edit the settings or delete the package. Another feature offered by CWP is the ability to customize your name servers for your customers. To do so, click the Name Servers tab. By default, the current name servers will be formatted like this. If you prefer to customize the name servers, uncheck the box to use the main name servers. And then here, you can choose a domain for name server 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can choose the domain from the drop-down list. When you're done, click Save. You'll notice that in this case, there's one account and one affected DNS zone affected by the change and offered the option to update it. We can click yes or no. And now all of our accounts and DNS zones have been updated and here are our new name servers. Another function of the CWP reseller module is branding. To access that, we'll click the branding tab. Here we're given the option to upload a logo image Then we can configure our footer. 
This can be plain text or can also contain HTML tags. Then we can configure the user panel title. And then you can set a from name for your backup email. Note that if automatic backup is active, this is the from name that your email message will be sent from. Then we can set the backup email address. And same as above, if the automatic backup is active, this is the email address that messages will be sent from. When you're done with your changes, click Save. And that completes this overview of the reseller management module on CWP. For more information, please consult the user guide at this link. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks very much for watching.